been a minute anyway since I've done a highly on video. At least uh, this will be the second one since Q3 earnings rolled out. Um, you know, I've been indisposed in real life issues, coaching tournament soccer, finishing up that obligation, as well as uh, some birthdays uh, in, in, in our household. Um, so I, I wanted to put this out um, a, a couple of days ago. It's, it's been a little overdue. That's fine. I really try to combat the negative sentiment out there in the market. Um, I have my uh, I issues with the company. Uh, and they are specific to my own evaluation of Hylion. Um, they are not influenced uh, by the masses out there, uh, especially uh, folks out there who um, r really are taking a short-term vision uh, on the company, which, which I think is ill-founded. I, I think you're going to set yourself up for failure anyway um, if you're looking to do anything other than uh, look to the horizon with a company like this, there's going to be setbacks. There is going to be um, the issues that come along that would be uh, unforeseen and could have been unforeseen uh, 18 months ago uh, when the company came public. Brand new company, 150 employees here that we're working with. Um, I was able to speak with Lewis. Some of you guys that are, are reaching out to investor relations, Lewis has been great with me. Um, and you need to understand, he, he's not the PR guy, okay? Uh, Miss Maloney is as well, okay? So w whatever evaluation you have of the Hylion team for putting out information, you need to understand a little bit more about what their specific roles are with the company and on what it is that they do, okay? Um, Lewis provided me some insight to let me know that New, York's, New York went great uh, up in Rochester with Wegmans, went great. So some of you guys that are feeling like they should have, um, you know, dirty, dirty the 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 um, the truck up and drove it up to Rochester. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're, you're not. Um, perhaps maybe it's a, a lot a lot along the lines if they're delivering uh, the first truck to the first fleet. Perhaps maybe they took a perspective of imagine if you go to the car lot and you're buying a, a new car, and, and and you you see that it's been used for you know, 6,000 miles, and, and you're advertising it as a new vehicle. Um, I, I think Hylion was looking to make sure that everything was spot on perfect. Um, they know what the truck can do. And just as of late, uh, Detmar released an interesting video, one that I was really hungry for. I thought it was fabulous. And it's something that gets missed all the time with this company, and that's totally fine. The stock's going to do what the stock's going to do in the short term. There's, there's absolutely nothing you can possibly do. When this thing starts to go to the upside, people are be clamoring and telling everybody that they knew, you know, they knew that it was going to go up. And it, there's nothing that you can say or do uh, to, to help justify uh, the, the moves to the downside or the upside in a stock. And that's what people just miss all the time with stock market investing. If, if you want to go find a mate in this life, you can mechanically help yourself do that. You can apply passion, you can apply effort, and, and, and give yourself a better chance of fixing your situation, i.e. being alone. If you have a physical ailment, you can go to the doctor. If you need medication, you can do something to help yourself get better. If you have a vehicle that's not operating properly and it needs service, you can take said vehicle to the service station and you can get that uh, potential situation remedied by nature of human action. The stock market is the only thing that I've seen, and this is what I love about it, is that you can think all you want about what you want to see happen in a stock. You, you can put whatever threads you want. You can make up whatever hypotheses on a specific stock. You can come up with all kinds of different rationale as to why a stock is doing what it is that it is doing in the current short term and even medium term. And this is where I think the fallacy of a lot of people lies. They really do. Because here's the thing, there's no amount of mechanical application that you can make on a stock to move it either up or down. It just doesn't work that way. You can hope, you can think, you can lose sleep, you can stress out, you can try to influence others in your decision. None of it matters because, and I chalk it up as futile, the stock is going to do what the stock is going to do in reflection of what the stock market perceives to be the fair market value in a company and the stock market gets it wrong all the time. This is where opportunities align. 
Okay. If you think that the stock market is just as easily as blindly buying Tesla, then by all means, apply that strategy. I hope it works out for you. I hope you make money. Okay. But anything other than conviction on a company that you make the decision to either buy or sell on is more of a mechanical decision rather than an emotional one. And I think people all the time, they make a mechanical decision to put some dollars to work in a company or any company at that, at that point. And then any, every time after that, buy point or sell point, they do everything in their power to justify uh, them either selling the position or buying the position. And it just, large institutions have provided us a template, us being retail investors for many, many decades. Okay, many, many times over institutions will profit from situations like this, where companies with value, not tangible value now, but value in the future. And I'm going to talk about five things as to where I see that value lie into the future. Okay, not now, but in the future. Now, when I say not now, that creates an environment where people who, for whatever motivation, for, for, for whatever motive can come in and they can pile onto a stock like this and many others and, and make a lot of profit doing so, okay? Short selling is a big, big business and there are no protection laws at all. When a company like Hylion and many others that have technology that they're looking to introduce to the marketplace, but they don't have earnings yet, it's a treasure trove. It's a target, okay, for short sellers to pile onto the stock and make it that much more difficult to drive some sort of positive sentiment, which is the only thing that I will say that helps create a little bit of tailwind in a stock rather than create a bunch of headwind in the, in the stock. Obviously, there's headwind. The stock is up 100% of the time in after, um, after hours markets, but then it comes to the open market and sentiment and for whatever reason, uh, the stock market, whether it be um, uh, daily volume, whether it be the amount of, um, uh, of, of buyers in the open marketplace drives down the stock most days. And that's where we sit right now at this dismal uh, entry stock price of around $7 at the time of filming this video. Now, do I think it's going to dr uh, drive down even further? It's really hard to say. But right now, the justification with the cash and cash equivalents on the books of about $600 million, really, you're not paying that much for the actual tangible business, the board, the patents, the technology, the opportunity that exists therein. We'll get a little bit more into that. But before we do, let's talk stock for a second, okay? The Independent Investor Channel is actually an investor in Hylion, have been since the beginning. I took the, my first set of liquidation at about the $27 mark on the down slope, okay? I felt like it was caught up in a slippery slope there. I went ahead and took some profits and started to incrementally buy the position sub-20, okay? So there was some positions that were put in sub-20, and I thought it had dipped enough, and I really didn't want to wait a whole long time before I entered capital back to work in the company. So I've strategically based and thrown a lot of hundred share, a couple hundred share positions at certain times uh, over the last one year uh, of basing out this position. I've got my cost basis down to about $11.30 in one of the accounts. It might be a little bit higher than that. I do own it in multiple accounts, three specifically uh, in larger positions to declare to you now, but all told we've got 12,450 shares, Okay. 12,450 shares. My conviction in the company has not changed. Um, I have seen no reason at all to change my thesis at all. In other words, my long-term prospects for the company going forward holding the stock now. That's just how I look at it, okay? Um, if, if the company came out and they said, look, these are things that we, we have to worry about internally, not externally, but internally, I, I may change my mind on that. Now, I'm kind of a funny investor. There's a lot of people who come to the independent investor channel for whatever uh, motivations they get out of it. A lot of people come in just for my highly on reviews, and that's great. Um, I know the company inside and out. Um, I know where uh, to put the pieces together with highly on, and you kind of need to do that a little bit. 
Because if you just looked at the company now and, and weren't interested in the space in general, I don't think that you could manufacture the level of due diligence that you'll need to substantiate a position. Now, if there was any time to substantiate a position, it's now. OK, don't talk to me when the stock is doubled next year or the year after or the year after or even tripled into 2022, latter 2023, 2024 and beyond. Don't come to me and ask me, Ryan is highly on a buy here at 30. OK, I'm telling you right now, if there's going to be have ever been a better time to invest in the company, it's right now at seven dollars a share. But I will not provide that dialogue once the share price starts to move up. And you're asking me to thread the needle on a company that I've been bullish on for 18 months. Okay. So have fair expectations. All right. Now we come in, we are coming into tax loss harvesting season. There's been some folks that have, you know, declared that they're going to take the tax loss. I haven't made my decision yet. Um, right now I'm on the decision not to sell. Um, I'm not going to declare, you can only uh, um, claim up to 3,000. There was some floating around that you could claim up to 4,000. Uh, I was able to, to validate, you can only claim up to 3,000 in tax loss. Um, for me to reduce that tax burden uh, on some of the gains that I've, I've had around 12,500 of, of gains, um, to, to reduce that to 9,500 uh, of tax liability on that amount is, is really the deliberation that I have. Um, the, the, the bottom soup to nuts answer for you guys is that I should do it. Probably save me a couple hundred dollars of tax obligation um, that, I, that I wouldn't have to pay if I take the tax loss. Um, but the bottom line for me right now, and if you said, Ryan, give me a decision right now, the answer would be no. Um, I don't want to sell the shares. I don't. I don't want to sell, sell the shares. I don't want to allow a pocket or a vacuum for uh, investors to, to sneak in and really start to take advantage of what I think a lot of people are going to be doing, uh, tax loss harvesting, uh, when I can just exercise my right to hold the shares because I'm bullish on the company long term. So it does not fit with my, you know, my thesis. I would absolutely, if I took the tax loss on the shares, backfill it with at least uh, some cash secured puts on the downside. But I've looked at the premiums on the downside, and guys, they're not that attractive, which tells me in the options market that, that they're not betting on this company going that much lower. Okay. In other words, it's not worth buying a few contracts at the $5 level to make 50 bucks on a month out. It's just not worth it to me. I'd rather hold the shares. Okay. I've made a lot of money uh, collecting premiums on the downside, especially with the cash secured puts. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling that that's the best method or remedy right now uh, in the company. Okay. Now let's speak options a little bit. I do own some contracts. I'll declare to you now 31 total contracts. Uh, I'll give you the breakdown of the four uh, sets of contracts that I have. Uh, 10 at 10, 2023. Okay, so 10 contracts at a $10 strike, uh, 2023 expiry. Uh, three contracts I picked up on that real deep swoon that it went into in the upper sixes. I was able to pick up some really nice premium uh, strike at $7 for 2024. So push those out long term. Uh, eight at 10, 2024. Okay. And finally, uh, 10 contracts that I've held for a long, long time. I'm really underwater in these contracts. But again, being bullish long term, I don't think that it's too much to ask the company to get above the 1250 strike uh, at 2023. Okay, so that's the options rundown for you guys. I will just caveat this. If you're coming into the independent investor channel to try to copy my position uh, or take my bullish recommendation on the company to justify your own position, uh, you are wrong. OK, um, I've spent hours on this company. I've spent a lot of time in outreach. Um, I've talked to uh, at least one uh, person that's uh, internal with the company uh, who's in charge of investor relations. Um, and, and it's been positive every time. Uh, I, I do offer some uh, harsh criticism openly through social media because I do uh, foot stomp the lack of vis visibility uh, at Hylion. And that is my personal assessment. It doesn't mean that I'm right. It doesn't mean that it's merited. It does not mean that it's warranted. You guys are going to come back and you guys are going to hate me for saying that. But if, if you guys want to agree with me on that thesis, that is all it is, is an agreement with me on my assessment of that. Does it change my disposition on the stock? 
No. And this is just where me and you look at money differently. Okay. It's just where me and you justify and rationalize different things in why we take investments in, in, in certain things in our life. Let me give you a couple of examples. Why is it okay to enter into a, a, a home okay, at a half a million dollars at an, at a, at an absolute all-time market high when everybody out there is talking about a real estate bubble? In other words, there are experts telling you right now that if you buy, you run the greatest risk of losing money on that home if you want to sell it in the short and medium term. Okay, we are due for a correction in real estate values in this country. It's just one example, and it's the best example that I can offer you and the most justifiable if there's people out there looking to buy a home and they've saved up and they've, they've done what they need to do to enter into that property. Here's the thing. If the market does fall off a little bit and now you're in hawk, fifty, dollars $100,000 in that home, that is deemed socially acceptable. It is. People will congratulate you. They will come to your housewarming party. They will bring you a bottle of wine, okay, to celebrate your investment in that said property, okay? Let me give you an even better example, okay? People out there that justify going and spending $75,000 on a new truck or a sports car or, or a Tesla, okay? So you can put it in the driveway and you can clean it up and you can have it just sparkle for the rest of the neighborhood, okay? That is socially acceptable and it is deemed a status symbol, okay? This is why people gravitate toward this type of activity. And it, it's just, it's almost like a sick ambition to pursue ends in this manner. When you know, and I don't believe that they know, but I'm telling you that that investment of $75,000 has a 100%, one hundred percent chance of depreciating in value almost to the point of a, a, a very anemic percentage of original value after five short years okay it is planned failure in the eyes of the investment world and a lot of people will say i agree with you ryan you know a car is not an investment we all know that do you do you really know that Okay. Unlike the home that I put into the category of a long-term appreciating asset, I gave you the, the example of FOMO buying at this high market. In other words, there's not going to be any more real estate within the next five years, and it's all going to be full. And people who don't jump on this bandwagon are going to be out in the cold, shivering like a wet, cold, and hungry dog. Okay. You need to FOMO buy no matter what. If the home is worth 300000 you have to pay $500,000. But why is it so socially acceptable to enter into an asset like a truck that's 75000 when I just told you, and th these, are, these are not my opinion, this is a fact, that that investment, it's an excuse to show off to your neighbors is what it is. It's keeping up with the Joneses, okay? It's your existing car isn't good enough because you've had it for eight months and you're tired of it. It needs a new set of tires. So you're going to go justify because there's existing value in it, okay? You don't acknowledge the fact that you paid $50,000 and now after one year, it's probably depreciated ten dollars or $15,000 in value, but you're willing to trade all that in. You're willing to sell the farm for the ability to put that depreciating asset in your driveway. Why do I, why do I give these comparisons? It's because when you're looking at a company like Hylion that I've taken a position in and I've declared to you now, that is seemingly just absolutely faux pas. And there's people that come in and they believe wholeheartedly that I'm off base. Like, in other words, how dare I? How dare I take a stake, an ownership stake in a company, a sizable one at that, okay? It's because of the justification, okay? It's because of the application. I don't apply the same methodology in my stock market analysis than I do in owning real estate. I don't apply the same rationale in my stock market investing that I do when I go purchase an automobile, okay? I acknowledge upfront that those dollars that are going toward that automobile purchase 
has a very, very good, if not a 100% certainty that it will depreciate in value and it will not be considered any type of a valuable asset into the future insofar as having the opportunity to appreciate in value, okay? When I look at my cumulative net worth, certainly I can put a $25,000 value in it at that specific time, but over time, that asset will cost me money, okay? In other words, it will go down in value, okay? The staunch comparison that I draw between real estate, stock, autos, and many other appreciating types of, of assets out there, vacations, we're paying for experiences, right? But once that experience is done and we've taken all the photos and we've posted all of our stuff to Instagram and Facebook, th those dollars are gone, okay? I come back to the highly on position that I have, all right? Taking an ownership stake in the company requires all of the pedigree that I talked about up front, and it is not, it is not in anyone's best interest to apply a methodology to where you think that you can look at something and you can fine tune it, you can adjust the governor, you can take a wrench, and you can apply some pressure to it, you can get some consulting help, you can get some help yourself, you can stress out about it. All of those methodologies have proven futile in the stock market, and they just don't work. And we have talked blue in the face to retail investors over and over and over again in that you have to be willing to apply infinite conviction when you enter into a stock. The big institutions are showing us exactly how to deal with this right now. Okay, I don't see statements out there from BlackRock. I don't see statements out there from Vanguard. They don't cover stock in that way. Okay, they're taking ownership positions in said companies because these said companies meet a certain criteria to be included in their certain indices that they represent through the products that they sell. Okay, and they can sit on a company as long as they possibly need. All right. So for you guys that think that Hylion is somehow going to go to the pink sheets, I think that takes a lot more imagination than looking at the five elements looking into the future that I'm going to discuss right now with Hylion as far as my bullish conviction on the company and what it's going to take to actually materialize a successful investment, and it will be done so free of emotion, okay? That is just what it takes, and I'm sorry to scare some of you guys, and, and, and this, these are some of the things that I share on the channel as to what it takes to be a successful investor, you cannot invest, okay, and then start to justify your position day in and day out as to why the initial conviction that you have is no longer valid. It just doesn't work that way. It's futile and it's planned failure, okay? Had a few people come across and, and get my uh, impressions about Paul Cargo's um, liquidation of the company. I watched it and um, I, I, I agree with his decision. He explained it elegantly. I love Paul. I just think he's a great guy. Um, he was very, very specific on how he invests in the stock market. He doesn't have to share this stuff. Okay. Paul can do what he wants. Okay. Just like anybody. Okay. Paul just so happens to come onto YouTube and, and share his insights and thoughts as to what he's thinking. Now, what he did say is he loves Hylion. He loves it. He loves the concept. He loves the technology. There's been no indication in all of my watching Paul's videos over the last year that he feels any different now than he felt a year ago. He gave some of the rationale as to why he liquidated the position based on his age and his inability to or unwillingness to wait the stock out. Th those are perfectly uh, good substantiations to either sell the stock or on the flip side, where I'm coming from, keeping the shares. OK, uh, either one is right and, and, and neither one is, is wrong. And, but I didn't think that Paul uh, talking about his position was any reason to, to freak out. I, I thought it was awesome that he came on and he shared his thoughts on, on why he did what he did. I was kind of confused as to the buying at 725 and then justifying the selling at 711. The only thing that I can discern from that is that we are talking about a sizable amount of money. I could be wrong. Um, he did not disclose the dollar amounts, nor does he need to, nor does, nor does he need to provide the level of transparency that he did. Um, and I, I just appreciate the, uh, uh, the, the, the candid talk. 
Uh, I think, unfortunately, Hylion has probably backed some investors into a corner a little bit. Um, I think they're doing everything that they can possibly do to get through what is going to be some tough times with the supply chain shortage. Um, will it be 12 months? Will it be beyond? Will things shake loose to where the supply chain opens back up and we have an availability of the components that go into the products? Perhaps. Uh, perhaps. Those are all unknowns. These are all things that if you're going to try to um, tell the future okay, and, and say where the stock is going based on those presumptions, um, great. Uh, I think you're doing it wrong. I do. I, I, I think when you say that you have conviction long on a company, I believe that you need to demonstrate that you're long on the company. I really do. And I don't fault Paul at all. As a matter of fact, I congratulate him uh, and, and I applaud his, um, his candidness on coming on and sharing with the YouTube audience uh, what he's doing in the short term uh, in the company. Okay. What he did say is, you know, he has no problem entering back into the company at $12 because he's got a fair market value of this company at, at minimum, at minimum $28. And he thinks that it should be well over 50. I'm in agreement with him and it will be, it will be, uh, but how long it's going to take to realize that true valuation in the company is going to be based on their ability uh, to mass scale up into production going forward. Okay. Let's talk about my bullish thesis, why I invest in highly on this will help you a lot. The opportunity, the opportunity at $7 to step in. Now, contrary to opportunity, you can go invest in real estate. You can go buy that $75,000 truck, even though I told you maybe it's I got a 100% failure rate. I don't, maybe you didn't hear that, but it's badass, Ryan. I want one. Fair enough. All is fair in love and war. But the opportunity to invest in a company like this that I feel is both oversold and undervalued right now is, is presenting the opportunity of a, of a lifetime, okay? That Detmar video told me a lot. A dirty truck pulling a frack sand uh, trailer. Uh, the, by nature of my buddy Henry, who also with RP Music, he uh, uh, estimated that that was about 52,000 of payload there. Uh, the ERX is supposed to be able to do about 80, uh, or excuse me, the uh, payload maximum for the roadways is 80. Okay. So there you go is a real world application of these trucks uh, ripping some ass through the sand on unfinished roads, I might add, and providing bottom line value to uh, Matt Detmar and the Detmar team uh, every mile that's driven for the company. You don't get any stronger validation than that. And this is what is being missed. OK, we can talk about protecting the paint when it goes to Wegmans. We can talk about all the lack of product validation and transparency that uh, uneducated uh, investors are demanding from highly on right now. And if they don't get those demands met, that they're going to justify selling the position here. Does that sound a little bit crazy? OK, when you look across the entire portfolio, of things that are going on right now at Hylion, I think that you can find that there is an awful lot to be bullish about. This was huge for me. I didn't know the level of integration that the hybrid units are, are playing in the fleet at Detmar. Fabulous. Absolutely fantastic. And I thank the new channel. Um, I forget the name of it. I do apologize. I just subscribed to it yesterday. But where this content is coming from is absolutely fantastic, man. And this is something that I haven't seen from Nicola or Hyzon. But this product right now is in the hands of customers and it is being used in the highest level of rigor. And that is integrated with industry. You don't get any better product validation than that, okay? There was somebody who came by the channel who mentioned to me that there's a difference between product validation and internal verification, okay? That internal verification with the hybrid unit has just been completed. And this is where FEV plays a huge, huge part in aligning their engineering expertise and really making sure that this product is capable of enduring the rigors of over the road, uh, long haul transportation. And to me, I, I di didn't think it got any more demanding. I'd love to see the highly on unit, uh, the hybrid up in the Northwest, up on the logging roads, you know, hauling tractors out of logging sites, uh, hauling, you know, riggers 
uh, out of logging sites. Okay, that's the type of stuff that I've been wanting to see for months now. And that was really my first taste of saying, man, here's why my conviction lies where it lies. And unlike the truck, and unlike the, the real estate examples that I talked about, that may potentially lose value over time, think about the substantiation and the value proposition of, 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 of those types of things when we're witnessing the product operating and at the highest level within industry. And, and Matt Detmar has not come back and said anything other than the product is phenomenal, Healy is a visionary, and it notched them number eight as a private company on those companies that are taking those initiatives and environmental steward, stewardship moves forward. He was number eight on the list. And who did he name as the, as the, the reason for making that happen within his fleet? Hylion. This wasn't just a, 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 a spur of the moment statement that was made. Those validation uh, uh, videos that we saw, of the highly unhybrid units hauling those frac sand trucks, that's a big, big deal, guys, okay? And if it can do it for Detmar, the scary question and really what, what feeds my bullish conviction is how many other fleets out there can benefit from the install of the hybrid unit uh, and, and provide that extra oomph in horsepower the extra fuel savings on the diesel side, and then start on that reducing the cost of ownership of the unit itself and the payback that exists with the hybrid unit. It doesn't get talked about a lot. This unit has the ability to pay itself back over X number of years based on fuel cost, et cetera, based on you know higher fuel cost is going to mean more cost savings and a higher payback if you're saving 20% to the minimum 30% on the high side for fuel savings, it's going to be X number of years before that unit actually pays itself back. Now you have a unit that operates at a higher efficiency that you've paid for uh, over time by running the unit. These highly on units, they become more valuable as they run, uh, and they only provide value to the bottom line. Once that initial cost is put up front, then the unit can start to be run and pay for itself over time. The fleets know this. Okay, the fleets know this. And the opportunity that I talk about with Hylion being that opportunity that fleets can actually keep their existing trucks and they can put the Hylion system in place where it counts is the key to the value proposition and the opportunity that exists in Hylion. Number two, it's undervalued. If you want to pay 30 times right now for the S&P 500, go, go ahead. I think it's the single greatest tool to wealth for any investor out there, especially new investors who are looking to dollar cost the average and entering into the market. But I looked at the graph and right now trading at 30 times, it's gone up since 2009 to 2021, where we are now at the time of this video. The question to you is, where do you find pockets of value in the market? If you find value in your conviction of Tesla, NVIDIA, right, trading at astronomical price to earnings ratios, these are great companies. I cover them myself. I don't own them. My conviction lies in owning undervalued and underappreciated assets. This is where Hylion falls right now. Okay. So the undervaluement of the, of the proposition is saying one of two things. I believe that at some point in the future, the stock will be worth more than it's worth now. It's just that simple, okay? And I don't validate the stock price from day to day. That's where a lot of you guys, if you need to hear my philosophical rant about how you cannot apply emotional content when you own stock to the stock, it just doesn't work that way. It's one of the only things in this life that is so inhuman that you have to apply a mechanical approach to it. And if you are not prepared to do that, I would rather see you not invest in the first place. Don't invest. Don't invest. Don't invest if you cannot apply that methodology. Nothing less than that. Not partially human. Not, hey, I'm in a bitch while Ryan's not watching me. A full 100% mechanical, like a robot. Okay? Emotion-free. And it's very, very difficult to explain that to human beings who are emotionally driven animals, 
okay? Emotion drives everything that we do. But if you are not willing to do that, if you are not willing to look at the company from now and say, you know what, strategically, long term, it has more potential to the upside based on what it is that we know, as opposed to having uh, some downside risk at, at these levels uh, to the stock. Is it worth it? Is it going to be worth it next year? Is it going to be worth it two or three years down the road, five years plus down the road? I am doing a long-term generational investment. If you're not in it for any other reason, then I don't want to hear about your so-called conviction in this company right here, because this company's bottom line uh, strategic goal is to change the world. And they can do that with their solution. It is just way too pre premature to judge them on that expectation now. We will judge them on that expectation as the company evolves, grows, and establishes their footprint in the industry and looking to share that opportunity validated by our friends at Detmar the way that we know that they can, okay? The Hypertruck ERX, that's going on right now at Wegmans, okay? The hybrid has been going on for a long, long time. And I do think that they do have a niche in the marketplace for the EX hybrid unit. I absolutely do. Okay. The governance. There's been a lot of people who have said this and that, that they're top heavy on their board. Uh, I, again, I think this is an observation that is ill-founded. I think if I were going to put together a board of governance, as well as their upper management team, I don't think I could have selected any, 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 any better. Uh, I think Sherry Baker's my favorite. Um, I love her demeanor uh, as the CFO. Um, her pedigree is absolutely fabulous. Her resume is absolutely top notch. Um, she herself has connections with some of these companies that I don't think need to be on the Innovation Council because she has those contacts anyway. It's no big deal. Um, I love her application. Uh, her steadfast knowledge and demand over uh, the financials in the company, I think are top notch. I think she knows exactly where to extrapolate value from the balance sheets. And I think she's going to be a diamond in the rough for the company. I think the upper management is fabulous. Um, I, I, I don't agree with the assessment that somehow we need to start firing management and start blaming the, the board of governance right now. When Hylion just introduced Mary Gostansky uh, to the uh, to the technology, and it, it, it's those are the types of things that have to happen if those uh, board of directors, okay, are going to um, uh, um, um, advocate for the company. And I believe they'll do that. I think it's a solid strength of the company. The comparison to Nikola not having ties to politicians, that's your opinion, okay? Um, I think ties to the U.S. government are absolutely fabulous. And when Elaine Chow uh, joined the board of directors, that was a positive for the company. Um, I, and you can tell me I'm wrong. No problem. I could very well be. And you guys need to understand, man, I don't speak like I'm the end all be all of, of, of the way things are. I am offering a commentary from my perspective. All right. And that what I find disappointing all the time is that we start to pick away at some of these things that have evolved over the last year. We assume that the evolution over 2022 is not going to, what, continue with the company? I just wholeheartedly disagree. I think this board is going to fortify. I think they're going to align a strategic decision as any good board of directors will. I think they're going to exploit their contacts. And I think they're going to really champion the vision for where this young company is going to go into the future. That's just my feeling. Okay. So the board of governance for me is absolutely a bullish uh, sign uh, with the company. I, it's, it's one that I don't mind having my dollars with. I'm satisfied that they've, that they've uh, appointed the board that they have, and I'm good to go. Now I can start blaming the board of governance now in the short term, for, for, for what? Entering into the stock that, 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 that is suffering right now? The two do not align with me. I look at both of them in a compartmentalized, mechanical, and robotic fashion. And when I look at the board of governance, I have to give a check mark and I have to give proper credit where credit is due. It's just that simple. That's how I look at it. I think on the upper management side, I feel just as convicted with the experience that have been uh, brought on Durashwami. Fabulous. Absolutely to bring um, uh, Dan Gallagher on board uh, with the sales team. Absolutely fantastic. couple of younger uh, pickups. 
I think these folks are really, they need to be given a chance to get their foothold and really start to provide value to the Hallian team, not as individuals. There's not going to be any individual that is going to drive this company into the future, not the CEO, not any one person with the board of governance, not any one person with upper management, not any one sales manager that's hired on is going to make the difference with the Hylian opportunity. It's going to be a collective buy-in of the company to drive the strategic vision forward. Answer that question for me. Do you believe that they are or are or are not doing that? Um, equally as applied across the board on your conviction, if you decide that the answer is no, then don't buy the company. It's very, very simple. If you do believe that their strategic vision has the pedigree to materialize into something very special into the future, then you can invest some dollars into the company. It doesn't mean that you have to mortgage the house to invest in Hylion, okay? I've got people that are bitching and complaining up and down because they bought the stock at $8 and they've lost a dollar per share, okay? Have a little perspective on this deal because you will get no sympathy from me, zero. I've got folks that have thousands of shares and they want to bitch and complain that they bought it at 920 and now here it is at seven, they're underwater a little bit. You do not have the long-term vision, nor do you lack the discipline or tolerance to own this now, you might as well just sell the company because that mechanical robotic application that I speak of that's going to be necessary in this company, you don't have. You don't have. Sorry to give you some tough love, but I'm talking to you. You do not have it. Just sell out of the company. You're going to sell out at 15 if you make a couple bucks anyway. Don't worry about it. You might as well just take your small losses now of a few hundred bucks or a few thousand bucks and move on because you're not interested in applying the methodology that works in stock market investing for long-term fundamental value investing. It's just that simple. If you don't like it, you can turn the video off and go find somebody out there that's going to fluff your ass. I won't do it for you. I won't. Okay. All right. Number four, the vision. I love the vision. Enter, entering into the EV space, which is actually catching a little bit of fire right now, Hyzon came off of what I thought was a pretty good quarter, Nikola as well, and Hylion as well. Hylion's the only one that's being punished for it. Some of the remarks that came through really did shed some light on some of the internal struggles that are going on from a macroeconomic perspective, right? So no problem. Does that change the long-term vision of the company? No. What is their vision of the company? To change the world, okay? How do they change the world? Do, I, do they do it by selling mass orders right now? I'm going to tell you, highly on, for bulls, they know that they are ill-prepared to accept mass orders right now. They are not. They are not in that uh, stage of the company to enter into mass scale production right now with what's going on macroeconomic. So what do they do? Do, they, do you think that they've shut the doors and stopped working? Absolutely not. I actually look at the opposite. I think they're actually using this time. And if they're smart, they're using this, what I would consider for the lack of better terms to be somewhat of a pause or a downtime to where they can really focus on the innovation council. They can really focus, focus on that product validation, okay? Getting it into the hands of would-be customers, solidifying those would-be customers, keeping the dialogue going with those existing customers, both on the board, uh, Innovation Council, and off the Innovation Council. Some of those customers that they've been able to uh, garner over the years through the hybrid installation, some of those uh, outreaches can continue through this time. But the vision of the company is a beautiful thing. Here's my, ma here's my macro perspective with this stock. I believe fleets want to change. I believe some of the massive orders that are coming through from some of the largest companies in the world of note, Amazon, Pepsi, okay? Some of these large companies, some of them that are, have already committed, Anheuser-Busch, which is an ERX council member, some of these large institutions, and it's, it's not just a few of them, it's most of them understand how important it is to step into this new carbon neutral or carbon negative environment, or at least to provide some of the strategic contributors to that overall company factor. In other words, there's going to be factors that have nothing to do with trucking that give a, a, a mark against that carbon score. 
the ERX allows them to draw down on that uh, uh, carbon footprint uh, number uh, in their corporate governance with, with regard to environmental stewardship. Uh, what a great opportunity. It's absolutely dollars well spent um, on the uh, initiative to become more of a green company. And then when they end up on lists like that, that acknowledge those companies uh, that are taking that step in the industry and really being industry leaders and ambassadors of being uh, a, a green initiative company, Hylion provides that solution. And because they're not entering into that realm of, of and, and seemingly not cooperating or participating in that right now, there's good reason for it. I've just explained why. The question is, do they have a chance to provide that strategic vision for the multiple customers that they have and the customers that there can be no way of perceiving that they will earn into 2020, 2022 and beyond, okay? I think the real catalyst here, and I've talked about this before, is Hylian's ability to garner piece after piece after piece of building what is going to be a multi-piece pyramid to realizing this integration to mass scale for the industry that is absolutely hungry to change. Thomas Healy has not uh, given us any indication at all that industry is not ready. It's actually the opposite. It's these small technology companies like Hylion and Hyzon and Nikola that are not ready. They are not ready to step up into mass scale production yet. The bullish bet is that that should transpire over the coming years, okay? And the, the irony in the whole thing is there's going to be a lot of twists and turns over the next coming years, and you're just going to have to be willing to enjoy the goods with the bads as those positive catalysts come, come on, as those negative sentiments roll off, and they will. We'll look back at this time and say, wow, why was I so stupid? Why did I assume that the supply chain issues were going to pers persist indefinitely? That was my assessment at the time, based on a Yahoo thread of morons that say that the company is never going to be able to produce product. Why, why did I think that? Because at that time, we had companies that actually had product in their hands and were using them and actually supplying a lot of uh, perspective to the bottom line. The next opportunity that I have here is the reality of Hylion Company. Uh, to to actually get this hands in the um, in, in in the company's hands, super super important. Okay, you guys need to understand the reality of what's going on right now. Okay, the stock is in a gutter. Okay, seven dollars. There's no bullish sentiment. There's a lot of headwind against the stock right now. I do not think that there is an alignment of where the stock is with the company right now. I, I do not. I still believe that there's a disconnect. And I believe that there's going to be piling on until there's no more piling on that can be had. Okay. That's just the reality of the situation right now. Okay. The shares that I've declared to you, I will be holding long. I am a long term bull in the company. Okay. Whether or not I take the tax loss is really up in the air right now. Um, my decision is not to sell the shares. I want to retain my position um, and I will not bitch out. Um, for a three thousand dollar write off to profits, um, I'm a bull. Um, I'm 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 a hard thinker in the market. Um, I do have robotic application. I do have the ability to separate from my money. And if you want to take a page out of my playbook, I would uh, encourage you guys each to take that page out of my playbook uh, and make it a reality for yourself. Because anything less is uncivilized, and it has no place in the U in the stock market as an investor. Not partial, not fully but all the way committed to a mechanical robotic application to what is going to finally realize the five points of value that I've earmarked in this video. Appreciate you guys, appreciate you guys tuning in. And leave the comments at the bottom. I love striking up dialogue on the highly on videos. Absolutely subscribe to the channel. Share the message with anybody out there that you know is hungry for highly on information. Uh, please share them uh, and, uh, you know, bring them onto the channel. We'd be glad, glad to have them. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Staying with me for the totality of this video. Good luck in your investment future.